All right, one of the hardest parts about changing your life or focusing on your health and fitness doesn't come from you. It's not always about your motivation or your consistency. Sometimes one of the most difficult aspects comes from your family, your friends, and your coworkers. Let's talk about it. What's up everybody, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk about something that I go over with my clients a lot, uh, especially when we first start, and that is how to deal with your family, friends, and coworkers once you make a decision to make your health and fitness a priority. You know, it's super hard to make these decisions, um, and make these sacrifices, whether it's, you know, putting the time and energy into working out, you know, changing your views about what eating is and uh, your coping mechanisms, and, you know, going to, gatherings with your family or friends uh, or work friends, but not eating the same things they're eating. Or, you know, when all your friends go out drinking, you might go out with them, but just order water or cranberry juice and lime or something like that. It can be very challenging to maintain your plan and stick to it amidst all of that pressure and a lot of guilt and shaming and, uh, you know, the teasing or whatever. So I wanted to go over a few things that might help you deal with that. Okay, so for people who work in offices, one of the biggest issues you're going to face is the just constant barrage of junk food being left, you know, in the lunch room or break room or whatever, or especially around the holidays, people are just constantly bringing in cupcakes and cookies and cakes and different candies, uh, which is, there's no problem eating any of that stuff, but because it's so readily available and everybody is constantly eating it, you do run into a problem where you're indulging in that too much where you know where you might normally do it once or twice in a week now it's once or twice in a day and that stacks up all of a sudden weight starts piling up on you and you know your desire and motivation to exercise or eat cleanly just starts diminishing you know the more sugar you eat the more you crave sugar so one of the things you need to do is set very clear boundaries with yourself and maybe even with your coworkers uh, if you have that kind of relationship where you can have a kind of open and honest conversation like, hey, I don't want to eat this stuff. So if you want to bring it in, that's fine. But can you please not offer me any because um, I'm trying to stick to this health plan, nutrition plan or diet plan or something like that. The other thing is taking some control and responsibility on yourself to say, you know, right before you go into your office, of, okay, I know there's going to be these sweets there, but I am not gonna eat any. I brought my food, my you know, pre-made lunch, whatever it, I am following from my you know, personal trainer or nutritionist or doctor or whatever, this is what I'm eating. So you kind of remind yourself right before you go into that environment that it's gonna be challenging, but you're gonna stick to what you're doing. Um, so the office can be really tricky. The other thing, like, I mean, it's been probably 12 years since I worked in an office, but the other thing I remember from that time is when I would bring uh, lunches would be people coming over and uh, I know they didn't necessarily mean to be kind of rude or obnoxious, but they would look at what I'm eating and be like, oh, what is that? Which is a crazy thing to say to somebody. So just understand you're going to deal with that. Um, you just want to kind of mentally and emotionally prepare that, okay, I'm trying to maintain this plan, but a lot of these people aren't going to be on board. And that's just about you. Okay, the other issue is friends. I can't tell you how many times I've had friends, you know, call or text, hit me up and say, hey, let's go do this or do that. And I say, oh, I gotta work out. And then their usual response is like, ah, just skip it, work out tomorrow or work out extra hard tomorrow. And that includes like, we're gonna go out drinking or we're gonna go out and eat this whatever food that I, you know, I'm not really um, including in my current nutrition plan. And most people will just immediately go like, ah, don't just skip it, blow it off, do what we're gonna do together, and then you know, work extra hard tomorrow. Which one, it, it doesn't work. Um, but also it's like, you know, people's kind of immediate uh, inclination to try to throw you off of your game plan. You need to be really aware of that happening. Um, Nobody else is going to do the work for you. So it's easy for someone else who isn't doing what you're doing to say, ah, screw it. Who cares? Just don't worry about it. Also, you know, the saying of never trust a bald barber. Of course, it's not literally true, but the idea is why are you going to take advice from somebody who is not doing what you're doing or has never gone through what you're going through? 
So if you have this goal to be you know, strong and fit and healthy and really work on putting uh, good, healthy nutrients in your body, and then you have people who aren't doing that or maybe have never done that trying to tell you not to stick to your plan. So you just keep it in perspective, understand who's giving you the advice, who's talking to you and what they're actually trying to tell you to do. It's a big problem. I've had clients or students over the years, you know, blow off class to go out drinking with their, which is fine, no big deal, but consistently. And then also talk to me about, I don't know why I'm not seeing the results I want. Well, sometimes you can't have it both ways. You can't blow off all of your commitments and then still, you know, get the benefits had you kept them. So try to manage that. Again, you know, keeping a schedule of saying, on these days, I can go out after I do my work. So that's another reason I've talked about it before, but why it's so important to schedule your workouts. Because then you can still maintain your social life while still sticking to your goals. So if you go every day at you know 6.30 p.m., let's say, I work out and I'm done at 7.30, and by the time I shower, it's eight, and then after eight, I can go out. You keep it like a schedule, so that way when your friends say, hey, let's go hang out, yeah, cool, I'm free at eight. And that way you can maintain both. You don't necessarily have to sacrifice one or the other, but you do have to make uh, some compromises to get what you want. I think part of the reason so many people will have a resistance to what you're doing, which is trying to make your life better, is because a lot of people don't do this. So one, they might not understand it, they don't understand the importance. Um, and then two, there's a kind of like a, inherent guilt people feel when people achieve something positive that maybe they're not doing. Uh, so they, it not, might not be malicious, but they kind of try to torpedo your progress in that way they can feel better about themselves. Again, it, it's usually not malicious, it's kind of a subconscious thing that people do. Uh, so it's something to be aware of. You know, the common adages of, you know, uh, we fear what we don't understand and, you know, misery loves company. Those are all very real processes that people go through and they can affect you in big ways so you know stick to your plan do what you need to do for you first you know you got to put your mask on before you can help anybody else put their mask on so don't allow you know your the parade of junk food in your office um, or people looking at you bringing your food as like oh that's weird or you know your friends trying to guilt you or shame you into going out or blow off your responsibilities to hang out with them don't let that throw you off your path. You can, and if they're, you know, if these are your friends, you should be able to have very open, direct, honest conversations. Like, look, this is something I'm trying to do. Um, it doesn't mean I love you guys less or I want to spend less time with you, but I need to do this for me and then also include our friendship into my time as well. But I need you guys to understand that and respect that. So please invite me, but don't, you know, guilt me or shame me or, you know, try to, derail me from what I'm trying to do. I'll say this, you know, back when I was drinking nonstop and doing drugs, nobody said anything to me. It was just normal. Oh, that's what Graham does. It's part of the process. When I would show up to a party with a bottle of scotch and just drink it, like, like a beer, like I'm gonna drink this whole, everybody's like, ah, oh, look at crazy Graham. That's just what he's doing. You know, when I would just be out of my mind, doing like way too much drugs. Like what, I mean, that's, you know, narcotics and drinking and smoking and all these things. Nobody really said anything to me. It was just part of the norm. But when I made a decision to change my life, the first thing I did was like, okay, I'm gonna be a vegan. Now you don't have to be a vegan, but I was like, I'm gonna be a vegan. And I also fasted before I became a vegan. A lot of these were just kind of tests of uh, will and endurance. But I will say this, everybody, was like, Graham, what the fuck are you doing? You're gonna hurt yourself, this is crazy. Being unhealthy is kind of part of the norm. So when you change that, a lot of people have a pretty visceral reaction to it. Also, a lot of people don't necessarily understand the process of being healthy or getting healthy. So they see you doing things and they don't get it and they wanna shut that down. Again, none of my friends were malicious in not saying anything to me while I was killing myself with drugs and alcohol. And they necessarily weren't being malicious when they were freaking out that I wanted to be a vegan. I'm not a vegan anymore. But uh, when I wanted to be vegan or when I wanted to fast for 30 days, like they didn't understand. You know, being unhealthy is normal. People understand it. 
working for your health is less common and people really do struggle with that sometimes. So when you're uh, making your plan to change, understand that part of your barrier and part of the hurdles you're going to have to deal with will come from your family and friends and coworkers. That doesn't mean that it should be so deflating that you give up. It just, if you understand that that might be a big part of it prior to starting, you can adjust for it and uh, include it in your plan. Like, okay, I know I'm going to meet some resistance here, not just from myself, but from these people. So one, I need to set up boundaries clearly. And then also I need to find people who will support and encourage what I'm trying to do. That's the other really big part. When you surround yourself people with people who um, are your cheerleaders and say like, hell yeah, do that. I'm, I fully support you. Even if they're not doing it, they support that you're doing it because they know it's good for you. Uh, you will have a much better chance of success. So whether that means joining an online workout group like mine on Mondays at 6.30 on Zoom or my Instagram live groups or whatever, or reaching out and getting a personal trainer uh, to help motivate you and keep you consistent. All those things will help you uh, deal with kind of that pressure and resistance from within your own circle. All right, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you like the content, please like and subscribe, share with other people, uh, hit me up on all the social media platforms, Instagram at Instagram Baker, Twitter at Graham Baker. My website is GrahamBaker.com. Um, yeah, and I'll see you next time. As always, be well, do good, make healthy choices. Peace.